Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. My name's Rebecca. If you're new here, you're very, very welcome. And if you're a regular, welcome back. It's week 46, it's the second week in November and our second week prompt is always a word prompt. If you've been watching over on Instagram, you'll know that this month we're using the word cosy. It's getting really quite chilly here in Lincolnshire in the UK. The nights are drawing in and my thoughts are turning to everything warm and comfortable. And I thought this would be a great prompt to inspire us this week. Now, I have really challenged myself with this week's piece. We're going to do an almost entirely silk shaded picture and we are going to put in a little bit of fabric manipulation at the end but please don't be intimidated it's actually much more straightforward than you might imagine and this is a masterclass in trusting the process i was really really nervous setting out but if you just stick with it you will get some results that you can be happy with you don't have to follow my idea exactly. You might have something slightly different that inspires you more. But either way, I hope that you will find this tutorial inspiring and encouraging. And I do hope that you will give it a go. If you do want to stitch along, I've put a list of everything you're going to need in the details below. So do check that out. Gather all your bits and pieces and let's get stitching. My first idea was based around one of my favourite drinks at this time of the year, which is a pumpkin spice latte. I know that divides opinion, but I really love it. It's a really cosy drink as the nights draw in. I thought this one would lend itself really nicely to uh, fill stitches and particularly some silk shading. Just capturing that swirl on the top of a latte to create that lovely sort of milky feel. My problem with this one was though that it lent itself to our neutral tones that we'd used all the way through October and I wanted to use a wider range of colours in our piece this week so I parked this idea for the time being. My next idea was based around the nights drawing in and I don't think there's anything more cosy than a glowing fire. I quite liked this idea. I thought we could maybe do some applique blocks around the outside edge for the bricks around the fireplace to make the actual fireplace itself. And then we could maybe do some quite sketchy silk shading to create the logs or the coals on the fire. And the flames lent themselves really nicely to silk shading again and I thought we could really play around with some colour to make that really have lovely gradients on the flames there. But I couldn't stop thinking about animals and the cosiest thing I can imagine is a sleeping cat and I thought this one could be a really lovely exercise in silk shading. I have to be honest, it scares the living daylights out of me because I am not experienced with thread painting. I am nervous about it, but I thought it would be a really nice one to do. And I didn't want the cat to be floating in the air. I wondered whether we could get some fabric. I've got some sari silk here. And once we've finished stitching the cat we could maybe stitch down some fabric around it to create a sort of nest little blankety nest for it to be sitting in and although i think this will be a challenge for me this is the one i'm going to go for i have made a pattern for this if you're not confident drawing a cat shape and you can download it for free on our website and i'll put the address at the bottom of the screen there while you're there, do have a look in our shop. We've got some nice embroidery kits that are beginner friendly and some seasonal ones as well. Perfect for this time of year. So do check those out while you're browsing to find the pattern. I'm going to be working on this lovely rusty orange colour. It's actually called pumpkin spice, so it couldn't be better. It's a Coonin recycled felt. And I'm not a massive fan of orange, but this one has got that sort of burnt autumnal quality. And I really love the colour of this one. And I thought that meant that I would have to then stitch a ginger cat. So I've selected a range of gingery tones and I've started in the middle with 
sort of really orangey ginger that I want to use and I've gone lighter and darker so I've gone as light as this DMC Ecru which is a warm earthy off-white and rather than using black I am going to use this dark brown for the darkest areas like the cat's eye and things like that so that's my threads I've also done a little bit of preparation of my felt so I've sketched out my cat onto some soluble stabilizer again just like we did last week with our mushrooms I've drawn the outline and I've also put in some of the stripes and if you notice they follow the curve of the cat and this is going to help me work out which direction my stitches are going to go in unusually I've also put my felt in a hoop and this is going to help us as we're going to do so much stitching it's going to help us get a really neat finish and help our stitches lie nice and flat and smooth on the surface so a hoop will help it's not essential but I'm going to find it quite helpful if you've never used soluble stabiliser I will link a video in the card at the top of the screen so that you can learn all about how to use that. I'm constantly on a quest to transfer patterns to felt because felt is quite difficult you can't trace through it. I don't want to leave a stabiliser on too long because I want to be able to see how my threads are interacting with that background colour of felt. So I've come up with a bit of a plan I've got a single strand of embroidery thread here I've just chosen that mid-tone orange and I'm going to stitch around the outline with back stitch and what I'm hoping is that this is effectively going to draw the shape of the cat in thread onto my felt and when once I've got that outline I'll then be able to remove the stabilizer and work directly onto the felt with without that medium in between so I'm just doing a simple back stitch all the way around the outside these stitches will be covered up by my silk shading so you don't have to worry too much about it but I just want to be fairly precise so that my cat doesn't end up a peculiar shape if you're not sure about back stitch I'll link a card at the top of the screen so that you can go to a tutorial we covered it right the way back in January and there's a fairly straightforward tutorial in the video that I'm going to link there So that's me gone all the way around. I'm also just going to put in the eyes and the nose. I want my fur to overlap them a little bit. So it makes sense to me to put them in first. So again, I'm just going to do some fairly free stitching. It's sort of a back stitch, but I'm going to overlap the stitches a little bit and just sort of sketch those eyes in with the thread. If I leave any gaps when I've taken the stabiliser away I will be able to see so I can always adjust and correct a little bit later if I need to. I'm just going to go along the eye line there. I haven't got to worry about creating cat eyes because this cat's asleep so we've just got the closed eye lines there. So I've gone along the line once and then I'm just going to build up the line with a second layer of stitches just in the lower portion of that eye line just to thicken it out a little bit and make it more defined. You can be fairly free with this because it is quite a sketchy approach and as long as you are happy with the results really that I don't think there are very many rules to govern how you do this. The idea of silk shading is that we're using our thread almost like a paintbrush or a coloured pencil and so the marks that we make with our thread are going to be the same as the marks that we would be making with a pencil or paint if we were painting the cat or drawing it. That's both my eyes in and I'm just going to define the outline of the nose there as well just so that when I'm stitching the face of the cat I've got a guide to where my stitches are going to spring from and how the threads are going to line up to create that sense of 
the cat being in three dimensions and having some shape. So again, I've just got a single strand here and I'm just using that thread to sketch the outline so that I can get rid of my stabiliser and kind of know where we're heading. I'm just going to take the felt out of the hoop. I'm going to peel it back a little bit. I did take the tack out of this before I put it on the felt. So I just pressed it loosely onto some felt just so that there were some fibres on the glue on the back of the stabiliser and so that it was a bit looser and didn't damage my felt too much. So I've just trimmed around the edge of it there and I just wanted to show you how quickly the stabiliser disappears. I've just got a little spray bottle and I'm just going to spray that stabiliser with water. So it's just a light spray. This is eight times speed. So in reality, this took one minute and 45 seconds. And I just at the end there rubbed away a little bit of the loose stabiliser, but you can see how quickly it disappears. I'm just going to rinse that and get rid of the rest of it and dry it off and then we'll come back. So here's my outline with the stabiliser removed. You can just about see it and that actually I think has worked really quite well. That's going to help me know where the outline of my cat is and I can work out the direction from the pattern that I was using. So I'm going to start by putting in some of the stripes. I'm going to start with that mid-tone ginger colour and I've got two strands here threaded up in my needle and starting off with long and short stitch I find is the trickiest bit once you've got some stitches in it's much easier to blend but I, what I want to do here is not sort of alternate stitches of the same length I want my stitches to be different lengths and offset from each other and as we come in with more colours we'll be able to blend other threads in to make this look little a uh, lot more painterly and sketchy so I'm just working my way down the cat using that the line of the back to guide the angle that my stitches are sitting at and I'm just putting in some sketchy horizontal stitches that are going to form my first stripe so I'm happy with that I'm going to move along a little bit and you'll notice that my stitches will change angle slightly because the back is curving around. Whatever angle that line, that outline of the back is, that's the angle that my stitches are going to sit at. So again, I'm varying the length of the stitches. I'm offsetting them against each other and making sure that I've got room to blend other colours and threads in along the way so I'm just defining those stripes I'm just going to work my way all the way around the cat I'm going to do it fairly methodically I'm just going to work round clockwise so that my my stripes all head in the right direction that's me all the way round to the beginnings of the tail I'm just going to put the rest in so now I've got a lighter shade I've gone up one tone on my little spectrum at the top of the screen there and I've got two strands again and now I'm just going to sketch in some stitches in between so I'm putting in a little bit of a lighter shade it's only slightly lighter you'll see it better as more stitches get filmed in and the idea here is that I interlock these stitches with the stitches that I've already made. I'm just going to work my way around and keep those stitches angled so that it looks like smoothed fur. I have to be honest that it was quite a long time in the process of making this before I was confident that it was looking right. It will look 
fairly ropey for quite a long time and this is a really good example of the need to trust the process when you're doing embroidery like this. The point of the art of silk shading though is similar to the art of painting. You don't stop after the first layer goes down. You keep working your paint until you get the result you want and so this is just a case of keeping adding and sketching and adding more colour and changing tones and blending more until you get the finish you want. It's really difficult to do a tutorial on this because it will depend on your style and the colours that you're using but it's just a case of using your judgement until you've got a nice blend. This is all my second shade in. I've now got a paler yellow so that's this sort of very pale gold and again I've got two strands and what I want to do is start filling in some of the gaps. So I've got my stripes in, what I want now is some lighter colour in between those stripes. So again I'm, I don't want absolute stripes, I want them to sort of blend into each other. So again I'm using long and short stitch I'm coming up to the edge of the cat's head now I'm saving the cat's head till last because I want it to sit forward and I'm blending in my stitches with the stripes that I've already stitched so you can see I'm bringing up my needle in amongst those more orangey stitches so that there's a blend between the two And again, all the time we're trying to create ragged lines that interlock with each other so that our colours blend one to the other. And what, one thing that I found really helpful as I was stitching this was I wasn't afraid of splitting stitches that I'd already sewn. So because I'm using two strands, you can actually put your needle down in between the strands on each stitch and it creates a much more subtle blend if you do that. I don't do it all the time but every now and again I will just split a stitch and it just adds to the sort of blendedness of the colours. I did find it really helpful to get a lot of the just the space filled with stitch before I made any judgments about what was going to happen next. So this is me going around with that pale yellow and it's starting to look nicely blended. I'm going to fill in the rest of that pale yellow and you can see the stitches curling round. So here I've got my cat filled in. I've also added in quite a lot of ecru as well, particularly down at the bottom of the cat's leg behind the tail. So I'm going to go back in now with some of this mid-tone orange again to try and blend out some of those stripes. It was just looking a little bit too strong and so I'm just putting in the odd stitch here and there. I've got a single strand here so it's much finer stitching. I'm just going to extend down those stripes a little bit into that pale area and then I'm going to go back in again with some even darker thread. It's quite a strong dark orange here. Again a single strand and I'm just adding some individual stitches quite spaced out. If I bring it up close you should be able to see it there. Just to add some depth of colour and some extra darkness, a bit more texture onto those stripes. So I'm going to work all the way around and then we'll come back and look at it again. So I've also added in some of this warmer beige and I've added that in to add a bit of warmth to the lightest areas on the cat. So I thought we'd 
put in the cat's face now and what I want is for my stitches to give the shape of the face so what I'm going to do before I start stitching is just sketch in some guidelines that are going to help me work out which direction my stitches should go in the way a cat's fur grows seems to grow out from the center of its face and so what we want is radiating lines almost like tiger stripes going out from the center of the face outwards so now i'm coming in with a single strand of that mid-tone ginger that i started with on the stripes and i'm just putting in some guidelines that are going to help me form the, the face and add in the rest of the stitches so i'm just taking my stitches in the direction that i want the fur to go in and I'm working my way all around the face, just putting in some starting point lines to help me work out everything else. So I've put in all my lines. I've now got two strands of that pale yellow again, and I'm going to add in much more fur and many more stitches following those guidelines that I've already stitched in orange. So I've gone all the way around the face with that yellow. Now I've got some ecru and again I've got two strands in my needle and now I'm just filling in gaps. So I'm trying to plug all the space in the cat's face. Sorry I'm very low on the screen there. So again you can see under the nose I'm doing almost vertical stitches because the fur will grow down away from the nose and under the cat's chin so the stitches go almost vertical there and then I come up the other side and work out the stitches outwards to the sides of the face so all the time we're trying to follow the direction that the cat's fur would go in and just radiate our stitches to create the illusion of three dimensions so that's the face filled in. What I want to do now is develop those stripes. I've done the left hand side of the face. I'm just showing you how I'm filling in the right hand side of the face. So I've got two strands of orange here. And again, I'm just plugging those gaps. I'm thinking about where the stripes would be on the cat's face. I want the stripes around the eyes. So that's what I'm doing there. I also want to outline the ears so again with my two strands of that mid-tone orange this is actually a split stitch and you can just about see what I'm doing there it's just a back stitch but rather than lining your stitches up you come up in the middle of the previous stitch so rather than starting each new stitch at the end of the previous one you actually come up in the middle of the stitch and break it break the threads apart with your needle and then I'm just putting in some sketchy lines I'm actually going to use the felt to provide the shadow on the ear I'm putting some sketchy lines in that are going to make it look stitched and make it look like this fur covering over the opening of the ear now the last thing I'm going to do is warm up that paler space and I've actually got a single strand here of the warmer beige colour that I've used and I'm just going to look for any spaces where too much felt is showing through and just put in some more fine hairs and this is actually going to almost create those fine whiskers that cats have on their faces. I'm putting in that fine fur around the eyes and nose just in a single strand and I'm also going to cover over a lot more of the ear there. I did find when I was stitching this that changing up 
how much thread I was using actually really helps build texture. So most of it is stitched with two strands, but then after I filled the space, I come back in with a single strand and just add some detail and it, it you wouldn't think it would make that much difference, but it really does just adds more dimension and texture. Now the last thing I'm going to do, and I've done this on the stripes on the cat's back as well, I've come in with a single strand of a, a much darker orange, it's the third in from the right, and I've just added in some quite sketchy lines in amongst the stripes, and it almost adds a little bit of shade and extra texture quite spaced out stitches just dotting them here and there in amongst the stripes just to add a little bit of extra tone so that's the cat filled in. I just kept going really until I was happy with the finish and that's really at the heart of this piece. You just keep going until it looks right. So now I'm going to make the cat's bed and I've got some sari silk here. I was going to use a dark red but I wanted to stick with that burnt orange. So I've just got a strip of silk. You could do this with ribbon or a strip of fabric bit of blanket would work a treat as well because you'd have that lovely knitted feel and I've just anchored it down there with a single strand of thread and just a couple of stab stitches and then I'm just manipulating the ribbon around the outside edge of the cat. I don't want to cover up the cat but I want to sort of tuck it in to the edge of the stitching. I want the blanket to come further forward at the front of the cat. I'm going to make it a lot flatter at the back so I'm trying to squash it up, twist it around and add in folds with my thumb and then catching it down with the odd stitch here and there. As I go round towards the back of the cat I'm going to make it a lot flatter and just to finish off I realised that I couldn't get very much of a sense of what it was looking like in its square so I've just taken it out of the hoop for this last little bit and I'm just going to work my way back around. So there's our finished piece. If I put the aperture over it you get a much better sense of our cat in its blanket and I just am really happy with this. I was so scared to do it. I had terrible <laughs> thoughts about what it was going to look like and I'm actually much more happy with it than I expected to be. I've tried to keep it really simple. I can't wait to see your versions of this. Do share your creations at hashtag FSH winging it and so that we can see them all together you can also add hashtag FSH winging it 46. If you've enjoyed this video please do give us a like. It really helps us and it helps other people find our videos as well. If you want another project that's similar I'll link a video here and I'll link a video up here that's best for you. If you want to subscribe click on our logo down here it makes it really easy for you. Thank you so much for watching. Have great fun making your sleepy creature and I will see you in the next video. Bye.